Ah. Yay. Ah. Running kind of late, so. How are you guys doing? And. Welcome to Fears Friday. I'm your lovely host, Laron Williams, your favorite MS warrior here. Um, oh, my bad. You running a little late, huh? Um, I do apologize, guys, and hello. Um, running late. Actually, tired. Uh, you might see the the, the face is like uh, the face shows the tiredness. Um, I really I didn't go to sleep um, until a little bit after two today. Um, MS had me rolling last night, spasms, pains, and all this. Um, hello, 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 everybody that's coming in. Hello. Um, if you didn't catch the late showing of MS Monday on um, <laughs> earlier this morning, you missed a good one. Um, we had our lovely MS Warrior. Brandy Stevenson. Um, if you missed it, you can go back to my feed and you can see it. Y'all gotta give me a second to catch my um to catch up here and bear with me if you don't mind. Um, my processor is running kind of slow. Trying to get my, um... Ooh, trying to get my little gadget here rolling all right so who has with your thumbs up have a issue with spasms i know i do i had those bad boys last night so my thumbs are up Spasms, uh, tremors. Anybody? Dang. <laughs> Dude. I'm trying to liven up here. <laughs> Ruth, are you the only one that has spasms? Oh, you got to be kidding me, right? Nobody else has spasms. Let's see, now I'm livening up now because I know, I know that's a story. So I should have thumbs up everywhere. I, I don't. Okay, hearts are great. Hearts are great. My screen should have been lighting up like thumbs, and hearts should have been just pop, 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 like popcorn or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, thank you, Missy. I, I see. I see. Missy's the only. Missy's the only one that has. Um. um okay. I see a couple of more people. Um. Jalissa, you have um, yours more in the summertime. Um, yeah, that's like me, and I'm hating that uh, we're probably going to have a bad summer here. Hello, Miss Virginia. How are you? Um, I 
they're they can be uncontrollable. Where um, I know the other day, my spasms were so bad they were my fingers was like playing a guitar. Even though I even though I wouldn't mind learning how to play a guitar, you know my my fingers doing like this. And so if I had a guitar, I probably would be jamming because see like my hands already knew what was going on. So, um, one second. Yeah. I am looking something up. Ah. Spasticity. How to control your muscles, right? Um, like this website I had looked up is, um, you know, like I just stated and like we stated. You guys are having, um, a lot of you all having, um, MS and Karen, you are on day four. Karen says that she is on day four of blindness in her left eye. So are you on... God, I can't say this during steroid names. Cy, Cy, Cy Medrol. I think that's it. Um, I know when I was blind, I had to do five um, dosage. Um, IV. And Regina says, Regina's in a little pain right now. And I, I, I think everybody that's on a little bit right now is kind of in pain here. But um, Karen, her spasms feel like an open nerve, like a severe toothache, but all over. Missy, her tremors were like pop rocks wouldn't stop hey um missing i'm a my um at the beginning when i got diagnosed my spasms were so bad um i used to be sleep and my kids didn't even know what was wrong with me they said i used to be jumping off the bed hey i don't know i could have been having seizures but um i know a lot of it was spasms and they didn't even know. So I, the more I think about it, but I've had, um, I've been woke and I've had these severe spasms that like make me jump. Uh, I was talking to Missy the um, other day and I was cooking, um, Pool pork. I don't know if anybody loves pool pork. I love pool pork. So give me some thumbs up. I love pool pork, right? Um, I'm sitting and my meat is done. I got my barbecue sauce. And, right, I'm going to the uh, slow cooker with my barbecue sauce. This, this is true now. This is true. This is true. Uh, no need to lie to you. Um, I'm at my auntie's house. And um, it's like, uh, let's say the screen, how I'm talking to y'all, or, you know, I'm going to the wall. And the slow cooker is like right here. I get to the slow cooker to 
take to top off of my, my um, barbecue sauce. I go to do this, and then next thing you know, I um, have a um, spasm. Uh, then my arm goes to. Oh, hell, oh my, my, my water's kind of. But it's just. Yeah, right? Barbecue sauce everywhere. All barbecue sauce everywhere. All on my auntie wall. And I'm cussing because I don't know what's going on. And they come running around the corner. And like, what in the world? And I'm embarrassed because I. It's. Uh, it's crazy. So. Regina says, oh, she's talking to Karen. And I like that you guys talk to each other while I'm talking. It's great, you know, because I, I miss things that some people say, and you guys can catch it. I really appreciate that, uh, being on point on that. Uh, let's see. All right, so it was saying that spasticity happens because of a imbalance in the electrical electrical signals coming from the brain and spinal cord. Often when multiple sclerosis has damaged the nerves there, this unevenness makes your muscles contract on their own and makes them tense. The condition can get worse when it's too hot or too cold when you have an infection or if you're wearing tight clothing. Now, see, I did not know that about the tight clothing. Now, I guess that's something that uh, women should be aware of. Um, tight clothing can cause um, spasms. So you guys, not you guys, but your ladies looking all, trying to look all sexy with the leggings and the tight jeans and the, uh, well, you know, I, I, I love me a woman with, uh, with fitted jeans and some heels on. So, yeah, and I know a lot of you ladies that have MS can't wear your heels anymore. And, you know, um wear some flats but get on your tippy toes and fake like you got some heels even though you might fall you know because uh well if you got that walker you know you can use that walker as a uh as some help right and get on your tiptoes and see then you'll be sexy again uh <laughs> uh but so Michelle, did I make a fuss about the barbecue sauce? Ah, I, yeah, because I had to wash it off. I didn't. It was hard. And, um, Well, Miss Regina, I'm just saying, you know, hey, I I used to do my little pimp walk with my my cane. So I used to say when I had was used to use my cane, I was a pimp. You know what I'm saying? I, oh man, wow, it looks so cool, frozen. Um, I had a phone call. Sorry about that. Well, uh, Regina, no, not st well, not stilettos with me, but um, you know, I used to have on my little, try and put on my little suits and stuff, or look all nice when I went out. You know, had my little, had my little cane. You know, had my little dilt in it. You know, see. We have a tendency of being embarrassed of the fact that we got a walker or a cane and whatnot. And when 
if you haven't done it already and you haven't thought about it, if you got a cane, there are stores called Hobby Lobby and Michaels where you can go and you can bedazzle that thing. You know, get that thing decked out with some gems. You know what I'm saying? All this stuff, all the accessories on that thing, you know? And come on. even You know, even a walker. Spray paint that thing. What? MS. Well, we'll say you got to be uh, all sad and depressed with MS when you can sit and tell the world I've been diagnosed but that's not going to take the joy out of my life you get what I'm saying and I really think that's the biggest problem we we get so caught up in all these symptoms and um Hey, Miss Porter. And um, everybody else that's coming in. Um, like um, Karen, and, you know, hey, your blindness. Um, I know that's not no joke. You know, you can't make. Um, there's nothing funny about that. But. Um, I myself had to wear a patch. And only thing I can think about that I was getting ready to um, be on on the um, what you call it, um, getting ready to um, be on the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, it, and and it is scary as heck. So. Um, no, Valerie, no, you did not throw me off. I'm seeing other people that's coming in and saying, hey, Matt, hey, if I miss another, um, male warrior that came through, I'm sorry, but Matt, I see you. I appreciate it, man, because I'm sitting up here in a room of beautiful women and I'm by myself, man. I got to have some men in here sometimes, and, and, and you guys be holding out on me. All right, um, um, Karen, your spasms are, your, your spasms are in your left arm, and it jerks up like I am um, waving hello to someone. Most people wave back. I know that's, <laughs> uh, and see, that's what I'm saying, Karen, you got to like, you got to laugh at stuff like that. And that's the same thing that happened with me and the barbecue sauce. And um, you look, left arm, maybe it's something that uh, happened frequently in uh, people where, you know, it's just, hey, if it's doing it, yeah, I'm waving at you. Hey, how you doing? Do I know you? No. But I just felt like waving because it's a, it's a happy day for me. Happy day for me. There's nothing wrong. Well, there's maybe something wrong, but uh, again, you got to make light of it. Um, we focus on the darkness of MS so much, and we get lost in it. And um, we wonder why things are, are, why things are so bad and so awful. And to answer that question, Valerie, yeah, I am I'm in Georgia right now. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Not that I know of. And to answer your question, Miss Jossa, yes. And I'm like mind blown myself. Um... But it um, to answer your um, your question, Jalissa. Nah, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen. Um, but we get lost. We get lost in 
We get lost trying to figure out what's wrong. And when we can't figure this out or it's a long process of knowing, you know, we get saddened. Um, we allow MS to just creep in the cracks and crevices and attack us. And we really just don't, um, Okay, Miss Valerie. Um, so we how can I say it? Why do can can somebody um can somebody explain why they feel that uh, the spasms that um well I'm not gonna say that. Let me let me explain this a little bit better or try, let me ask this question differently. Um the spasms that they have are they to the point to where you're so seriously scared because you, you have no control of your body where you're scared to go out. So I ask that question again. Um, your spasms that you're having, and hello everybody that's coming in. I do apologize if I don't see you, but the spasms that you're having are they're so severe where you're too scared to go out because you're embarrassed to, you know, wave at people that you don't know, or maybe just jerk a little bit. Um. You know, you can give me thumbs up or hearts, anybody. Or you can actually say yes in the comments because I know um, I don't think I was embarrassed to go out. Um, I just actually didn't go out at the beginning. Um, I didn't actually have access to go out at the time. Um we had just one vehicle. I got one thumbs up. Um, there's more people up here right now. I am seeing eight folks viewing, but I'm pretty sure it's a couple of more folks viewing that I can't see. So I should have more thumbs up, more hearts, and all of this stuff. And so, come on, really? Y'all are lacking today. Is it because I'm tired and hurting and y'all are feeling my pain. Do I have to get up and start dancing with something I would not do? So don't try it. Um, and Regina says, "Yes, she is." Uh, Regina says it scares us, scares her uh, when she's out or at church. But mostly everyone around her knows. And Ms. King is fine. Uh, we're talking about spasms and how the spasms affect us. Um, where because some spasms can be so hard and so noticeable, you know, people might turn and look and be like, what's wrong with this person? Um, Karen says... Um, Hers are on her legs, and when she sits too long, she normally goes out with people who um, know her and what her spasms do. So I guess you're trying to basically state that is you're not embarrassed to a degree, um, and that's great. See, I guess that's a good thing. You surround yourself with people that know what's going on with you. But I guess I was asking in the sense of uh, when you're going out by yourself or something like that. But no, that is good because even with going with someone, you still might be embarrassed because you're like, what if something, you know, what if my what if my leg kick up? You know, or what if I slap somebody by accident because my spasms are going crazy? 
You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think nobody's done that before, but who knows, right? Um, but Regina, going back to you, you, <laughs> you're in church, right? This is the, like, if nobody knows, and, uh, and you're in church and, you know, you start spasming like this. What you can say is that you have the spirit of the Lord, which that is so. Because I'm pretty sure that you're happy. And from talking to you, you're a happy person. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Just a little extra advice. You don't have to take it, but hey. So Regina says when she's in bed, sometimes it may, um, let's see, it may make me have to have, oh, she has to, you have to have someone take you to the bathroom. Tara, the reason why I, uh, a moment of silence there, you say that you get a, um, you say that you get spasms, you have a spasm fight side of your face. Does it jump? If you're talking about this, I can, um, I can definitely understand that because that's basically what mine did. I mean, you know, I, I used to have a little twitch, twitch in my eye, almost like I used to be winking at people. So I, <laughs> I used to stay looking at folks because I ain't want nobody to think I was doing this. Because that's basically what I was doing. They'd be like, what you winking at me for? And you know how some ladies, you know, you get offended sometimes. You don't want, like, what is this? What is this perv? Winking at me for? I don't even know him. Why? Why? Excuse me, sir. Why are you winking at me? I'm not winking at you on purpose. Is this my eyes doing it? You know, I have no control. I have no control over. But then my face, you know, my face used to do it as well. Um, and Miss King says um, she's never had a severe one. Um, she stretches a lot while sitting, and she's not embarrassed when people think she's in pain and and awesome. That's basically what we need to do on a lot of a lot of these situations. Uh, Miss Ruth, uh, her her legs mainly, um, and she's in the bed right now. She gets she seems to get more spasms when she is getting tired. Ruth, I'm the same way. If I overexert myself, I can have a, I have tendencies of um, having spasms. Like last night, I was up. Like I was stating, if you guys have, if you guys missed my late showing early morning of MS Monday, and you need to go to my um, my page, and it should be there, um, MS Monday. I had Brandy on as a guest, and she told her story, and it was amazing. Um, I I don't I I can cry a little bit, but um, I have a problem with crying. Um, but her story was very touching, and you guys got to go see it and look at it. Um. She provided some inf some great information, but um, excuse me, guys. My 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 equipment here is going out of um, juice. I gotta plug it up. All right, so let me catch up. Um, I see I see you have a question, Bree. Give me one second. Oh man. The thing messed me up. 
All right, um, Karen has an issue where she feels something is crawling on her and she slaps her arm or brushes her face and nothing's there, right? That happens to her several times in public. You play it off like there was something there was something there. All right, Karen, you're having nerve issues. Um, you might have nerve damage, which you might need to ask your doctor, talk to your doctor about um, gabapentin, which I couldn't do it. I'm allergic to it. Um, I'm on Lyrica, and I get those same little, um, it's kind of, you might be having symptoms of fibromyalgia, uh, where, you know, things feel like they're crawling on your leg or your arm. It's basically just your nerves, basically playing tricks on you misfiring I call it and um, Bree you say your question is what advice would you give or how did you overcome the battle of telling your friend or family that you're battling with a health crisis whether it's physical or mental um <clears throat> that's hard and I'm gonna be honest with you because depending on what that crisis is Whoever you're telling might respond in a way that might hurt you, um, might piss you off. Um, they might just run. You might lose them. So the first thing you would need to do, you would need to collect yourself. You need to be ready for it any type of response and you need to accept that response because we can't control other people and that's the thing that we have an issue with since we can't control how somebody else is feel especially as that person that we love and we say hey um sweetheart family loved ones friend i have this disease and let's say this person steps back, don't understand what the disease is, and they be like, what the world? Oh, no, heck no, I don't know what this is. I ain't got no time. I can't do it. Or, matter of fact, the, the worst thing is they sit and say, oh, really? All right, I got you. I'm going to be there for you. And the first sign of something that, what's wrong with you? Well, it has something to do with the issue that I was talking about. No, I can't. I can't deal with this. This is just too much. You know, I, I say, I and I could be wrong, but um, about forty, fifty, well, not fifty, maybe like forty percent of um. People that I've talked to that have expressed about their MS, they've lost a lot of friends. They've lost spouses. And then if you want to talk, if you want to talk about mental issues, that's even worse because you have the um, bipolar, schizophrenia, and and just stuff like that. You know, people are scared of that. And so you're not doing your medication or you might have an episode where you just spaz out, people get scared. And people are scared of what, what they don't know. And so that's when knowledge comes in. That's when research comes in. And that, that person cares about you like they say they do. They will sit down and they will research with you. They will be by your side. They will understand what's going on. So Bree, to answer your question, if that doesn't, if anything that I've said didn't answer it, is that you have to collect yourself. You have to prepare yourself first. You, you can only control yourself. You have to be strong and just express what's going on. You know, don't hold back. Allow them to respond to what's going on. And if you're talking to yourself, if you're talking about yourself, you got to allow yourself, you know, let them respond. You know, let them collect themselves. They might have to step off for a couple of days. You know, and if they don't come back, what you do is you you proceed on. 
It's a friend loss. It's a partner loss. There's nothing that you can do about that. You might cry a couple of days. You might be hurt. But guess what? That's their loss because they've lost a very important person. Or they might have lost someone that has been the world to them. Let that be them. That, let that be their loss. And you just move on. And I know that's hard to say. So don't hit me. Don't cuss me out. But it is a hard pill to swallow. So I hope I was able to help you there, Bree. And everybody that's rolling in, hello, how are you doing? Um, today we're talking about spasms and how spasms can just make us look silly in public. Or even at night, um, where we might fight, we might be in the bed with our spouse, and then the next time we know we, we hit him, and he's like, what you hit me? Or he or she be like, what you hit me for? Just tell them that they deserved it. You know, that's for the old and the new. You remember you used to mess with me back in the days, and so my body is remembering that this stuff. All right. And Tara, going back to your question, what happens with um, Gavin Pinton? With me, I get severe headaches, like migraine type headaches i can't take it i know a lot of people that are on it lyrical is the equivalent to that and but i love it it has been working for me um that's been my miracle um uh, fibromyalgia drug say that five times i bet you can't heck i can't and i'm not gonna try um so um and um, Regina, you're, you're um, saying something to Bree. I appreciate that. And um, Karen, you're on uh, Gavin Penton. And you hate it. You take it only when you have to. It makes you so weak, but gets rid of the other symptoms. But the trade-off is, is um, confined to the bed. So it makes you drowsy. Um, Lyrica can make you drowsy, but I'm going to be honest with you. Um, what you guys have to realize about these medications, they are like a pill form of alcohol. You can look at these, um, drugs that we're taking as like, you're basically having a drink. Um, how many other times that you're taking your medication because majority of your medication side effects has dizziness, sleepiness. So you're trying to, you're trying to figure out um, why you're stuck to the bed. Mainly it's probably because of your medication and you're not really, especially if you're not really a, a, um, a spirit drinker or just a casual drinker or not a hard drinker when you drinking certain I mean when you're drinking when you're taking certain medications it can hit you hard and it can just put it can basically have you out for a couple of hours and so you have to really be careful about and pay attention to what you're taking um, sometimes it is it's possibly good if you spread your medications out. You know, I don't. I know you don't want to have like a whole case of uh, um. What I'm trying to say. Um. Hey, Don, and hello, everybody that's pulling through here, and that um, that I'm not catching because the fees are going up because people are um, asking questions and, and 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 making comments, which I appreciate. Um. So yeah, you have to look at that. You, you guys have to take a take in consideration that um, the pills are uh, some form of drugs like alcohol. So <laughs> you popping pills is almost like you're drinking. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever looked at it that way. And um, yeah, see, uh, like Regina, you're taking your guy Penton. Four times a day. Um, my Lyrica is at its max at 600 milligrams. That is very strong for Lyrica. Um, Lyrica is actually stronger than Gabapentin. Um, but 
I take 200 in the morning and 400 at night. And my neurologist, this is what my neurologist states for me. Um, when I was taking my 15 pills, um, well, well, when I when I got down when I got down to my like six or five pills, she was telling me that go ahead and schedule yourself and take majority of them at night. It helps my insomnia as well. Um, the thing is, I don't take as many pills that I take, so it used my pills used to help me go to sleep. Um, I have what you call a rot gut, where if if I wanted to, I can drink a lot of spirits and be okay. As long as I'm not sitting down. If I'm moving, it's like, I'm great. You know what I'm saying? I am awesome. I am what they say called Gucci in this area. And I can party, sweat, and be good until I uh, just knock knock that hangover away or however you want to call it. And But if I sit down, it's all over. Um, so when I take my medication, I'm great. So I'm going to bed and get ready to lay down. If I'm taking maybe like 15 pills, pff, I'm out. So that's what she advised for me. Um, you, you still want to balance it out during the day because if you're, you might have medication where it needs to be taken throughout the day, then you need to take it throughout the day. But, um, like how my lyrical was three times a day and that one that I take in the morning kind of holds me until at night. And so that's when I take my two pills. Um, it's just something for you to play with, you know, ask your doctor if that's possible. And if that's something that you might can do, especially if you're fighting and battling insomnia, um, Tara, G-A-G, -G, I have the slightest idea what that is. And Amy, you need to get off a of gap opinion if it makes you hallucinate. We don't want to see ghosts or anything or, or, or just crazy stuff. No, we want to get off of that. You know what? Bam. Regina, all of these drugs have drowsiness. But <laughs> we can't smoke marijuana. In public. That's the same thing marijuana does. But the difference is. Marijuana does make, doesn't make make us suicidal. We was talking about this last night. Again you guys got to go to my. um, Go to my page. Look me up. I am public. Go to my page. And look at the feed. The live feed that I did this morning. With um, Brandy. Because she tells you. And talk to you. And talk to the, the MS Warrior community about um, weed and cannabis oil and and um, she's in Washington um, very very good information she uh, provided and done got repentance for nerve nerve damage uh, where you have all these prickly spiders and stuff you know you feel like stuff going up on you and you're doing like this all the time and folks looking at what's wrong with you and you know you know, bugs. I don't see no bugs, but just because you don't see them, that don't mean they ain't on me. And Jalissa, yeah, you can smoke in private. You can smoke in private if you want to, but it still should be legal. It should be recreational all around the world, like it is in um, California. People just should be able to walk around with a big fat cigar blunt. You know, I would love that. Get a cigar. A nice fat cigar. Split it down the middle. Take out the stuff. And fill it up with some cannabis. And roll it back up. And you know, maybe like a, 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 a good size blunt about that big. I guarantee that would take a lot of MS symptoms away. Um... Something, if you're in a state where you can sit back and smoke a doobie, 
<laughs> you might want to think about going to get you a nice good cigar and uh, filling it up and have someone roll it if you can't roll it yourself and go to smoking away. And, you know, just take all the little symptoms away for a brief moment. You don't have to smoke all of it. Uh, but when you do, if you do, think about me because I am so happily jealous for you. Um, Jalissa, you took it for spasms back in the days and you couldn't uh, sleep. I, I, I've i never heard that. And that's, wow. Okay. See, different strokes for different folks. And Ruth, Ruth says she came off of all her meds, like I said. And she realized that they do help, but also make you worse in most cases. That is correct. You can find out, really, after going take coming off of your medications, you can see which ones work and which ones are not helping you. Because when you're taking so many, you get lost in them. So, and again, guys, anybody just rolling in, welcome. Thank you for coming in. We're talking about spasm and how uncontrollable they can be. And um, actually, we're uh, rolling on into drugs and whatnot. I'm finna actually open the floor here in just a second to see if anyone wants to talk about any um so if you're if you're listening and you're wanting to um step up to the plate and tell like your side of the story on um any experience or any advice on uh spasticity that you might be able to help uh, with you going out and um how you can tackle or how you tackle your uncontrollableness of your body. Um, so while I'm looking at these comments, if somebody wants to come up, let me know and I'll pull you up and we can see you. We can uh, have you as a guest on the Fierce Friday show here. Done. I take uh, black offend as well. Uh, black offend has helped me a little bit with my spasms. Um, but I have my environment can get a little heated. And so, um, I think that goes beyond the assistance of my black offend. And so they're unable to help me to a degree where I'm still having, um, issues. And, um, Jalissa, are you hollering at me? I don't like to be hollered at. Yeah, um, I said all those words. I know a lot of people in here know those words, and it's not to, there's no need to be hiding. Um, Miss Pearson says she used oil and smoke it, and it makes. Um, it makes her feel like her old self uh, prior to MS. She loves it a lot. See, look, guys. Man, we need to we need to have a MS 1000, 1 million march where we have signs saying legalize marijuana and stop pumping us with all these factory drugs that are causing us to have depression and suicidal thoughts. Because there are natural um, herbs and, and spices, or however you want to say, out in the world that we can use that they're not tapping into because guess what? They don't want to because some of this stuff that they can't tax or they don't know how to tax so that they can make money for themselves. And, uh, you know, the government is hearing everything. I hope they are hearing me because this is something that they need to hear because they... The drug company, FDA, or whoever is approving all of this stuff is making money off of us going crazy. Knowing that if you sit and you tell us, hey, you're diagnosed with MS, 
You're going to lose control of your legs. You're going to be bedridden. And in order not to be bedridden, you're going to have to take this drug. And the last thing that somebody wants to do, especially if they're a sports player, to lose their legs. I've been playing sports for 15 years, and now you're telling me that I'm going to lose um, the use of my legs? You're damn right I want to take that medication. And what happens if that medication don't work? Well, you lose your legs anyway, and guess what? We want to try you on a different medication. This medication just might work. That medication there doesn't work. You've been on this medication for, what, two years. You try something else. We're guinea pigs. Now, not saying, not trying to say this so that people can get off of your preventive drug that you're on now. What I'm trying to say is we're at their mercy, and it's sad. And the only way that we can sit and can take control of this situation is to speak up. Now, some of us are not the type and we prefer to be in the background, um, not in the plain sight, then that's what you do. You make a movement in the background. In the background can be you're talking to people that are beside you. You're sending out notes. You're passing on information. You're doing research. Or then you have people like myself. Get on a feed, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, and you just go to talking. You know? <sighs> Something's in my mouth. I'm sorry. That's why I feel strongly about what I'm doing. That's why I push. Like right now, I am hurting. I am tired. But I do know that we need this. If I have to be a voice myself, that's something that I'm going to do. Um, I am... Um, the reason why I get joy out of doing this is because I am fighting for people that have helped me. When I come and I do this, the response that I'm getting from you guys not only help other people, um, you're actually helping me as well. So it's not like I'm trying to give, I'm not the only one giving advice. You guys are giving advice to me as well. So um, I really appreciate that. I really do. Um, uh, I get a lot of response, a, a lot of uh, messages about how people are happy and they would like for me to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, I've stopped so many times because I've allowed people to affect me. And that's how I can sit and I can tell you guys, don't, don't allow, don't allow MS to take your soul to take who you are because it's taking what you considered a life from you because guys ain't nobody say um no one said anything about coming up and saying anything um you still can but i'm gonna put my i'm, I'm putting my um uh, comic gadget over to the side because i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little rant here um Think about it like this. Anything could happen. You know, we sit and we get so caught up on material, money. Um, you know, I can say that I can get lost in my gadgets. Um, because my gadgets are my livelihood. Um, they help me do what I'm doing now. Um, but what happens if I lose all of this? What happens if I can't have my gadgets? I think about that. That scares me. Like, my gadgets are a part of me. Um... I wouldn't be able to do my live feeds. But that doesn't mean that I can't go outside. It doesn't mean that I can't grab someone's hand. 
and assist them and walk them personally through life with advice. That doesn't mean that I can't go stand on a corner and speak. Only thing that somebody can say is shut up. This is a free country. Supposedly, you should be able to speak. You know, rallies. Go downtown. Pass out papers. Go to the library if I have to. Print out some information. Go to Staples. Go to um, Office Max. That's what I would do. That's what I would have to do because I can't allow um, life situations, especially some that I can't control, Miss Regina, I'm not leaving. What I'm trying to explain is anything can happen. I might lose my stuff. Um, That doesn't mean that I've left you guys because you do Facebook doesn't, for, 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 for my understanding right now, Facebook is not leaving no time soon. Um, the um, Whatever his name is going to court, but I just don't see it going anywhere no time soon. And I, if you go to my videos, I have a plethora of uh, videos that are old but still can be used in this day of time. Um, but no, I'm not trying to leave. But what I'm trying to say is, um, say that you was a track star. And now you can't run. That doesn't mean that it stops you from being a cook. That doesn't mean that it doesn't stop you from being one hell of a mom, regardless if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't mean that you can't grab a laptop or go to a computer and pick up some other type of hobby. Um, something. Matter of fact, calling the MS Society and participating, um, we are all testimonies. When are we going to realize that? A lot of us are so caught up and I don't want nobody to know my personal business. It's not anybody's business to know what, what's going on with me. I, I, I'd rather not let someone know what's going on with me. Do you guys realize that when we think and... When we think in this way that uh, we're holding ourselves back, I'm not sitting up here and saying that you should go out and tell uh, the world that what type of panties or boxers or, or how you sleep at night with your partner. That's none of their business. Now, if you want to disclose that, that's your problem. But what's wrong with telling someone that um, now... Now, this doesn't have anything to do with work because work can be a little crazy. But what's wrong with telling someone or talking to someone? And I'm talking about outside of the people that are actually working. It can work and still have their jobs where they're putting in 40 hours and they're pushing, which I sit and I hold my hand up high and I appreciate people like that. And, and I hope and I wish and I pray for them that they can keep going because that makes me strong. That makes me realize that, hey, I can do it as well. Um, and to a certain degree in what I'm doing. And so I look at people like that and I am strengthened and I, I can do something as well. I can do something. I might not be able to put in 40 hours. But I can put in 40 hours somewhere else. And so that's why you see my face and my um, me talking like I'm crazy everywhere over here on Facebook. Um, so I'm not going to apologize by trying to motivate people. Trying to bless people with um, signs of hope. Because hope can be anything. You just have to be open-minded and be willing to see it. Anything small 
is better than nothing at all. And we block all of that because we're so focused on what we used to be, what we had. Me having a past like I've had. I can say I can look back and I can be so messed up right now. So suicidal. Giving up. For what? What I got what I gotta live for. After what I've been through, which I'm pretty sure people have gone through worse. But in my life, what I've gone through, what for what? Why am I gonna keep going? But I realize that. It's happened. You know what? It might just be a reason why it happened. And if I sit down and I go and I dissect everything, especially what I did wrong and the, the bad decisions that I've made, I sit down and I pay attention and I, dis and I dissect everything and I turn it around and I look at my life pushing forward. I can't make that mistake again. And if I make that mistake again, it better not be in the same way. You know, it, Saying like if I get the same outcome, it better be because I just came at it at a different angle and it just failed the same way. You're teaching yourself in your past. If you go back and you look, you can learn. And a lot of us that have been diagnosed, a lot of it comes from stress full trauma, not physical, more mentally, and it comes from a lot of stress. And maybe possibly uh, physical, especially when it comes down to like spousal abuse. Um, so you got to look at a lot of that. You got to think, now it's time for you to start choosing who you're talking to. Who you're falling in love with. It's time to be smart, guys. And it's time to be happy. How can you be happy with MS? Easily. MS, MS is an illness. You have been diagnosed with it. As, as of right now, it's uncurable. So now it's time for you to find another means of being happy, as in finding another small spot of light. Grab hold of it. And when you grab hold of something that makes you smile, you grab it. And you chip away. You chip away at the walls around it to make it bigger. And you keep going. And sometimes the rocks are going to fall from other places and kind of make the back small. But then you start by chipping away once you get yourself back together. So. And it's just, and it's just how I see things, guys. I could be wrong. I, you know. Don't quote me on um, a lot of things as in that I am right, but do research. Anything that you hear me say, do research. I had a lot of customers come to my line and we talked. Um, actually, one person talked to me about, they said, sir, get off of your medications. Um, there are other things, there are herbs out there that I had a friend that was diagnosed with MS and he went and did some research and he got off all of his medication and he's on herbs and all this stuff. I really couldn't talk to her because I had to work, which that sucked because I actually wanted to say, you know what, somebody take my spot while I go to the parking lot and talk. My supervisor was looking at me and I was like, okay, she, you got to go. But it was so informational 
that um, we were still talking and stuff and um uh, you know i just wanted to take my shirt off and just run off with her and be like okay let's sit down let's talk let's talk business man you know what do i need to do right but research um you know, in, me and my MS partner, um, um, we're, that's something that we do a lot. We do a lot of researching, um, which that comes to mind. Let's see. We're at the hour part. Didn't get any requests of anybody coming up, so I'm going to do my closing plugs. Um, I am so appreciative of everybody that came in. I hope that uh, this spasticity of an episode was useful uh, when it comes down to uh, people just waving at folks. <laughs> and they don't mean to wave. Um, I gave you some advice about pimping out your cane and your walker. Matter of fact, you can even pimp out your wheelchair. Um, get your wheelchair paint it or actually ask for a colored wheelchair they do have them out there um you can bedazzle their wheelchair as well so you can't sit up here and say you can't have fun and you can't be playful with what's going on in your life we choose not to think beyond what's going on with you sometimes you have to bring livelihood and um and and, and happiness to yourself outside of waiting for someone else to do it. It's better if you do it yourself because as long as you know how to make yourself happy, you don't have to worry about anybody else. So, uh, we have the Albany MS Walk here April 14th with this next Saturday. All right? So, for those who are not in Albany, Georgia. That doesn't mean that you can't walk for us because April 14, I would love for you guys to walk around your couch, walk around your yard, walk around your neighborhood and post that, guess what? I walked for the Albany MS Walk and I had fun. You know, If you're in your wheelchair, you know, get up and do the little sp if you could do it, do a little spin around thing. Um, if you're in a motorized chair, hey, take a lap up down the hallway in your in your house if you have to. We can do it because I would love to do it for you. If you send me and uh, if uh, send me a um, direct message in my inbox, letting me know when your walk is, I will most definitely walk around my block, walk around my house, walk around my backyard, walk around the front yard, and post it either on your page. Or just post it on my page and I tag you and say that I walk for you. Um, I just guess I want to be a walking MS warrior for this month. Um, well, yeah, um, Jalissa, pimp up your, you know, you know, we can, uh, what, find some pink jewels, you know, and, um, uh, Put on, put, 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 put on that, uh, put on your cane, whatnot. So, um, we got that. Um, unfortunately, I got bad news on my part. Um, you know, like I've been trying to tell you guys, my funds are low, and I've been trying to do as much as I can for us. And I've had to back off on my on the website, um, on the website on the. 800 um ms sos number um uh, because i haven't had anything come in on a fundraiser um i'm going to repost my fundraiser on my page here um if not today possibly tomorrow because i think i'm gonna pass out right after this but um yeah, if you guys see it, share it, please. Because if I can get something coming in, I can jump back on the website. I can jump back on some projects that I'm trying to do with I Can Beat MS, um, making it a nonprofit organization, trying to make some moves. Um, to be honest with you, uh, my goal and my dream for I Can Beat MS is that um, I am looking forward to. I'm not saying that I'm not going to do it uh, because nothing's not happening, but I'm looking forward into um, in the future traveling and actually personally going to see 
other MS um, groups, um, leaders of the administrators of the groups and having a live feed done to where we're talking. Um, I have a lot of ideas. Um, and I'm going to be honest, we all can do it. Um, I want to, I want this to be something that the MS community can grab hold to. So, um, if you guys can share it, if you know anybody that's willing to possibly participate and donate you, um, they are going to get their name or logo added onto a shirt that I am going to, once the funds are, so once we reach a, a destinated number, um, 20 shirts are going to be randomly giving out, um, off of um, a contest, um, we're looking to raise uh, 20, 20 grand. And so to actually, to do what I'm needing to do to get this off the ground like it needs to be. So I made a shirt called 20 Steps to Change. So uh, once we reach that mark, everybody that's participated, like I said, if it's a company, they get their um, logo on a shirt. If there's anybody that's um, donating, they get their name on the shirt. So once that um, 20,000 is reached, 20 shirts are going to be printed out. And they're going to be uh, raffled off to MS Warriors. And um, not only that, coming with that shirt will be a $100 gift card. Visa gift card. So... I am trying to push that as best as I can, guys. Hopefully that it'll start picking up um, here soon, if not later. But uh, I'm not going to stop that dream. I'm not going to pull back. Um, I know it's possible. I can see it happen, and I'm not going to give up. So hopefully we'll be seeing that soon. Um, then I have the I Can Beat MS YouTube. I am going to start... Um, this weekend, um, I am off all next week, which I'm going to be working on that. Um, start loading up the episodes on that. So if you guys don't mind going over, subscribing, um, liking, if you would like, it's up to you guys. It'll be great um, sharing it because it's... I realize there are a lot of people um, on um, I'm, I'm taking notes and looking at some of the there are a lot of people on YouTube that are doing um, MS and I love it. I, I really do uh, because that shows me that we're not sitting back idle. Uh, we just need to push a little bit harder. Like I said, I, I also see in the future as a, a, a vision of all of us in Orange, in Washington, D.C., just, we can beat MS. We can beat MS. We, well, no, as a matter of fact, we beating MS, and y'all need to correct yourself because we need to legalize marijuana everywhere. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? With the big old orange shirts, there's a million of us that's sitting there up in Washington, D.C. We're clogging up the streets and stuff. Wouldn't it be grand? Wouldn't it be great? Just close your eyes. I know you can see it. Orange shirts for miles. All races. Canes, walkers, wheelchairs. Heck, if you want to, um, if you're able to come out in, um, in a, in a, um, um, movable bed or whatever you know I can see this and I know it can happen we all just have to work together you know uh, all dreams can become reality if we work hard on it and so with that I end this episode and I thank everybody that came in and for those that are watching this on YouTube Hit that subscribe button over there in that corner. 
uh, watching other episodes on I Can Beat MS, and I love you guys. Jadim.